let's continue with cervical vertebrae briefly look at <coughs> the major features of the other cervical vertebrae we looked at the atlas and axis which are highly modified they look very different from other cervical vertebrae but the usual cervical vertebra will have the typical features like bifid transverse process the cranial articular process, the caudal articular process, the spinous process. From the cranial view, we see the cranial articular surface of the body, both of the transverse vertebral foramina, one on each side. The bifid transverse processes, if you look at the ventral view of the vertebra, it probably provides <coughs> some grooved area for attachment of the muscles as well as for the passage of the organs as well as we move further back as we move further backward to the following cervical vertebrae there would be some changes and some of them they would have specific features let's look at cervical vertebra number six this is cervical vertebra number six the cranial end of the vertebra and the caudal end of the vertebra the caudal end, as usual, we see the concave articular surface of the body. Cranial end, we see the convex articular surface of the body. The transverse foramina are seen. Now, in six cervical vertebra, this is the last vertebra which is going to have the transverse foramina. The transverse process is still bifid. The ventral part is laminated, which is more flat, which extends further below and also has a little process coming off moving more or coming off more laterally the cranial articular process is seen with larger articular area the caudal articular process is seen with articular area located on the ventral surface and the spinous process process is seen and that's why because of its appearance this vertebra is compared with sled because of these two transverse processes as they have part move, uh, extending laterally as well as ventrally and that is one of the typical feature of the six cervical vertebra which can be used to distinguish this vertebra from any other given vertebra a cranial articular process of the body of the vertebra but then most important feature here it has lost the transverse foramina the transverse vertebral foramina are not present in the seventh cervical vertebra instead it has a very typical feature which provides articulation for the head of the first rib which is costal fovea, specifically the caudal ones. Now, this is the caudal view of the seven cervical vertebra. Both of those parts, which are indicated in green color, they would be articular areas for the head of the rib. Here we have smaller articular areas, which are seen for articulation of the head of the rib. Remember, the rib is also articulating with the articular cartilage, which is present between the two vertebral bodies. Let's now look at the um, thoracic vertebra of the dog. Here we see typical thoracic vertebra, which has very long spinous process. The bodies are shorter. The transverse processes are completely modified. We still call them transverse processes, but then they are completely modified to provide the articular surface for the tubercle of the rib also referred to as transverse fovea this is an articular area for the tubercle of the rib the other features are quite similar to the any typical vertebra the cranial end of the vertebra with convex articular surface of the body the cranial articular processes with their own articular surfaces the transverse processes are modified the mammillary processes are also observed in the thoracic vertebrae so that is the mammillary process here the mammillary process on the other side the vertebral foramen few more important features of the thoracic vertebra we have highlighted two spots on this vertebra one at the cranial end of the vertebral body and one at the caudal end of the vertebral body 
those are very closely associated with the cranial articular surface of the body as well as caudal articular surface of the body and so these are the articular fovi for articulation of the head of the rib cranial costal fovea and caudal costal fovea the both cranial and costal caudal costal fovea are present up to the rib number 10 but then from rib number 11 12 and uh, in, in rib number 11 12 and 13 the rib does not articulate with the preceding vertebra and the now we are looking at the typical thoracic vertebra of the dog, the lateral view, the cranial end of the vertebra and the caudal end of the vertebra. The caudal end we can as usual see the con concave articular surface and the cranial end, the convex articular surface. The most important feature here is the transverse process which has been completely modified. In the cranial view we can see the transverse processes which are supposed to go further laterally, they are blunt and they actually modify to form the articular surface for the tubercle of the rib. This is called transverse fovea which accommodates tubercle of the rib. Tubercle of the rib of the same number of vertebrae would be articulating with transverse fovea of the transverse process. So we can still identify this entire structure as a transverse process but then it is modified to provide articular surface. On top of that we see projecting more cranially that is mammillary process the structure which we see here is still part of the transverse process the cranial articular process is seen from the dorsal view again from the cranial view we can see the cranial articular processes with their articular surface caudally we can see the caudal costal fovea one on each side so when you look at a lateral view we see like these two highlighted areas the one in front that is in the cranial end of the body of the vertebra one at the caudal end of the body of the vertebra the cranial and caudal costal fovea as we go slightly upward to the caudal costal fovea of uh, caudal costal fovea we see the caudal pedicular notch the caudal pedicular notch as well as much shallower cranial pedicular notch they would form the intervertebral foramen. So these are the typical features of the any thoracic vertebra. Very long spinous process projecting dorsally as well as caudally. Modified transverse processes which are specifically for the articulation with the tubercle of the rib and the cranial and caudal costal fovea for the articulation with the head of the rib. After anticlinal vertebra or diaphragmatic vertebra, the direction of the spinous process would change. Now this is the cranial end of the cervical uh, uh, of the thoracic vertebra and that is the caudal end of the thoracic vertebra. This is thoracic vertebra number 12. In this case, we see the costal fovea is only present on the lateral aspect of the body as opposed to very close to the cranial articular surface. So this is the costal fovea for articulation with the head of the rib and this is the transverse process which is highly modified to provide articular surface for the tubercle of the rib and so this is your transverse fovea and that is your costal fovea. Now as we move further backward we notice that <coughs> the spinous processes they have become shorter as well as they are now directed cranially and dorsally instead of caudally and dorsally. Some of, the tip, some of the other processes which are prominently seen in the thoracic vertebra at this level are the mammillary processes are very well defined and the accessory process is also very well defined. Now from the caudal view of the vertebra you can make difference between the caudal articular process both of those one on each side from the accessory process of the vertebra. The accessory processes are located caudally they are pointing caudally but they are separate from the they are separate from the caudal caudal articular processes from the cranial view we can also differentiate mammillary processes from the cranial articular processes this is the articular surface of the cranial articular cranial articular process everything which projects dorsal to that is your mammillary process
So from the lateral view, we can differentiate the cranial articular process as this area and the mammillary process as this area. So remember your mammillary processes are always located cranially and associated with the cranial articular processes of the vertebra while the accessory processes are always present caudally and those are associated with the caudal articular processes. Now at this point we have seen the cranial and caudal costal fovea are gone. Instead we only have one costal fovea which is present on the lateral side of the vertebral body. The typical lumbar vertebra. This is the typical lumbar vertebra. Let's look at the second lumbar vertebra as an example. Here we see the lateral view of the second lumbar vertebra. The bodies are longer as compared to the thoracic vertebrae. The transverse processes are back but they are much simpler as compared to the cervical vertebrae. Extending on both sides, we can see them in the cranial view, that is the transverse process of the second lumbar vertebra, the vertebral body, the vertebral foramen, the cranial articular process and the articular surface of it, mammillary process, mammillary process. As we go further on the caudal view of the bone, we can see the vertebral foramen the caudal articular surface of the body, the caudal articular processes and both sides of that highlighted in green those are the accessory processes. Let's go back to the lateral view with cranial end of the vertebra and the caudal end of the vertebra. The transverse processes as we move further backward those are going to become longer but still they project cranially and laterally. So their projection is craniolateral and they would maintain that projection all the way to the last lumbar vertebra and the transverse processes would become thinner and longer in the more caudal lumbar vertebrae. Presence of the mammillary process usually seen in most, almost all of them while the accessory process would become smaller and smaller as it moves more caudally. In more caudal lumbar vertebrae the accessory processes would become very very small. Well, the mammillary processes are still maintained in the caudal uh, lumbar vertebrae. The spinous process is short, blunt as well as it points or it is oriented cranially and dorsally. So craniodorsal projection of the spinous process is seen the cranial end of the vertebra, the caudal end of the vertebra. The caudal pedicular notch the shallower one in the cranial aspect but then those would, those would, uh, but the, those would form the intervertebral foramen. The vertebral foramen, caudal articular processes, accessory processes and those are the typical features of the lumbar vertebrae. Remember accessory processes will become shorter as they go backward or as they as in, in following lumbar vertebrae and the transverse processes would become slightly longer in the following lumbar vertebrae. So let's look at one of the uh, more caudal lumbar vertebra. So here we see the lumbar vertebra where the accessory process has almost become very small though in this vibration it is probably broken a little bit but then we can see it on the other side which is not as defined or as, as, as well formed as we saw in the earlier specimen. The mammillary processes are still present the caudal articular processes on both sides and now here we see let's let's orient it in the same way as we saw the previous vertebra the cranial end the caudal end concave convex the vertebral foramen the cranial pedicular notch the caudal pedicular notch remember the pedicular notches can also be called vertebral notches so we have transverse process of the uh, lumbar vertebra which is now much longer than the one we saw before. 
though it becomes narrower or more slender but it is longer but direction is still the same it is directed cranially as well as laterally craniolateral orientation of the transverse process craniodorsal orientation of the spinous process This is also one of the lumbar vertebra where we have tried highlighting different processes and their relation. Here the accessory processes are completely gone. So it would be your either 6th or 7th cervical uh, lumbar vertebra. And what we see here, uh, the cranial articular process with mammillary process, the caudal articular process, simple but long transverse process cranial articular surface of the body, cranial cost, uh, cranial pedicular notch, caudal pedicular notch. Sacrum of the dog. So in this view, we see the lateral surface of the sacrum. The sacrum is formed by a fusion of three different sacral bones. And so, the different processes of the sacral vertebrae are also fused with each other. As in the dorsal view, we can see the on both on both lateral sides, we see fusion of the all transverse processes, which forms the wing of the sacrum, cranial most part of the fused transverse processes, which is much wider. It's called wing of the sacrum. As we move further caudally, it becomes more flat and tapering. Wing of the sacrum is in contact with sacropelvic surface of the ilium and so here it causes or it forms the sacroiliac synchondrosis as well as synovial joint between the wing of the sacrum and wing of the ilium which completely forms the sacroiliac articulation. As we mentioned earlier, sacroiliac articulation is combination of cartilaginous joint and synovial joint. Cranial view of the sacrum, we see the vertebral foramen. Here we see the cranial pedicular notch. Then we have the cranial articular surface of the body, which is also called, or this part of the bone is also called base of the sacrum. Along the ventral part of the articular surface, this part is called sacral promontory. Ventral surface of the sacrum or pelvic surface of the sacrum, dorsal surface of the sacrum. In the dorsal view, let's move it a little bit laterally or see it from the lateral aspect. So we see the spinous processes. All the spinous processes are fused to each other to form the median sacral spine. This structure is palpable on the live animal. As the sacral vertebrae are fused to each other, the spinal nerves they exit the neural canal by means of two foramina uh, on the dorsal aspect and ventral aspect. These two foramina would allow dorsal branch of the spinal nerve and ventral branch of the spinal nerve to, to come out of the neural canal. And so we have two such foramina on each side, on the dorsal aspect as well as on the ventral aspect. So these are the, on the ventral aspect, those are called pelvic sacral foramina. On the dorsal aspect, those are called dorsal sacral foramina. The cranial most vertebra, which takes part in that fusion, retains its cranial articular surfaces, but those are slightly modified. The caudal articular processes of the lumbar vertebrae or the last lumbar vertebra are going to articulate here. The caudal most sacral vertebra retains its caudal articular processes and they articulate with the cranial articular processes of the first coccygeal vertebrae. So some of those features can be still can still be seen here. So the important features of the sacrum, the wing of the sacrum, the dorsal sacral foramina, the pelvic sacral foramina, the base of the sacrum, the sacral promontory, median sacral spine. These are the important features of the sacrum of the dog. Okay, now let's look at the structure of the rib. Now as we see the 
cranial view of the rib. In this view, we can see the head of the rib, the tubercle of the rib, the angle of the rib, body of the rib, and the sternal end of the rib. And these are the important features of the ribs that we can notice in this particular bone. The constricted portion right below the head is the neck. The curvature which occurs at the proximal end of the rib, that is the angle of the rib, and as we further continue, that is the body of the rib. The sternal end articulates with the sternum. And as we know, as long as it is directly connected to the sternum, we call those ribs sternal ribs. When it is either indirectly or not even connected to the sternum, those ribs are called asternal ribs. The last rib which does not get connected to either the preceding rib or any other structure, it is also called floating rib. Now let's look at the head and the tubercle. As we know, the tubercle of the rib articulates with the transverse fovea of the transverse process of the thoracic vertebra while head of the rib articulates with the costal fovea of the same number of rib as well as our same number of vertebra as well as the preceding vertebra. So we can see the articular surface on the head could still be divided into two different regions depending upon their art, it, its articulation with the same number of vertebra and the preceding vertebra.